Hello, it's uh, Philippe Aubert Gauthier again with a kind of modular tutorial. Uh, today I want to focus on envelopes. It's kind of a continuation of the previous uh, talk on clocks uh, where we're more interested into control and actual sound because uh, as you can expect you can spend a lot of money purchasing modular synth and things like that which is great and you typically look for high sound quality or distinctive sound quality but if you don't master control how to create gestures or things like that it can be difficult so today it's again a work on uh, controlling uh, modular synth we will again use uh, Odulus to give some example and make some link with hardware and other things but as I said I want to focus on envelopes and so first we will define what is the meaning of the word envelope uh, from the wave and the mathematical domain and then we will move on to the modular synth world we will some, provide some example we will also try to things in terms of electronics microcontroller so we will provide a general you know uh, canvas in terms of understanding what will be discussed today and then I will go through example the first one will be the typical use of envelope like to wrap a note which is a basic uh, basic musical example and in, this, in that case envelope will be used to control the amplitude of an, uh, an oscillator and then we will control a filter and a timbre of the note using a, another or second envelope but that's kind of the very basic and we want more we want to do more things with envelope you can do much more complicated gesture and I think in my view that we have to spend some time on that uh, thing to really explode in the world of envelope. So we will use um, multiple couplet envelope automation and uh, that's gonna be funky maybe it's no more envelope but it's kind of a envelope madness and it provides very interesting result. We will use just few theaters to envelope to create a sign of complex rhythmic pattern and then we will move to the more advanced part because we will have to make some programming in Odulus um, to create complex gestures uh, by sequencing envelopes using end of cycle and end of rise and it's not available in, by default in Odulus but you can make some tweaks to have these kind of end of cycle and end of rise so let's go on with um, what's the meaning of envelope that's Odulus yeah I like that one so the envelope from the world of waves is um, defined as kind of the curve outlining the extreme of a wave so you can see it on um, figure on the right I will just switch to something more appropriate yeah now you should see my cursor so if you have a signal and a seating signal like the blue signal like this this red line is the upper envelope and this one is the green one is the lower envelope it's kind of the it's not the instantaneous amplitude of the wave which is the actual blue value it's more like the wrapper of the amplitude and typically you can do two things in terms of envelope maybe you have the blue signal and you want to extract the envelope that's going to be uh, that covered today but it's called envelope following or maybe you have a full sine wave like with a unit amplitude and you want to wrap it in that envelope then you will apply the envelope to shape the uh, kind of energy envelope of your uh, signal which was originally like just one in terms of amplitude so today we will only use that for envelope so in the modular world there's many uh, modular for envelope one of the very popular is the math by baked noise uh, typically this one is symmetric so you have the left envelope generator and the right here which is another envelope generator so we will only f we will only focus on that part so typically you have gate or trigger input that input that will you know launch the envelope you have the rise time or the attack time and you have the fall time or decay or sustain time depending and you see here you have inputs that's very interesting because you can use signal to automate the attack time or signal to automate the fall time that's very important and some other things that are useful in if you have envelopes is these kind of thing EOR for end of rise this will give you a trigger or a gate when the envelope cycle is complete that's very useful because you can uh, no sorry that's the end of the rise so once the attack time is complete you will receive a gate to trigger something else like another envelope and then you can create very 
more complex uh, gestures or pattern while sequencing and uh, we will do this and you also have typical outputs EOC which means end of cycle so once this envelope have made this entire cycle after the decay or uh, release you receive a gate or a trigger to trigger something else so you can chain envelopes that's something very powerful typically not so much use but you can create very complex pattern using uh, shapes sorry or gestures using uh, these EOR or EOC. We will give some example in the end of the tutorial. So another popular envelope generator is the Quadra by IntelliGel. It's a four envelope generator. You have attack DK, trig envelope, but by default you don't can you, you cannot automate the attack and DK. So that's kind of a, a weak point by default because one of the example I will show is the massive automation of attack and DK, which can give you very complex gestures. And also there's no end of cycle or end of rise but if you get that module or any other one uh, at least this one sorry there's an expander and tadam you have end of cycle for each of the envelope so you can do much more complex thing and you have cv inputs for the control of attack and dk with a uh, attenuator for the uh, input signal for each of the four envelope and this is kind of necessary so i would get that one plus that one for full power. If you're on budget or looking for a more uh, compact solution, this thing by Expert Sleeper, they provide a one or two envelope generator, very useful, and even tinier solution. I don't know why I can click on, yeah, sorry. This is the Erika Synth envelope generator. You have attack time, release time, the rates, kind of the overall speed. You can select between lean and log envelope and you have the gate and you have the output that's cool because it's fairly uh, cheap to get this module but you don't you cannot be able to uh, modulate the attack or the release time using cv or control voltage signal and you don't have the end of rise or end of cycle so it's kind of a budget solution but a little bit limited if you want to plan if you're planning to do things that we will explore today besides um you know modular things like in the euro rack format some people a very interesting tutorial like that one whoops, to uh, make uh, software for generating ADSR so you can uh, have a general idea of the code but you could implement that in Arduino or I don't know Raspberry Pi or whatever something and so you can also create your own electrical circuit that will generate these kind of patterns which is a typical ADSR envelope attack decay sustain uh, level and release time so these are some examples uh, but we would go back to our thing. So we kind of defined the um, waves and in, the, in the, sorry uh, envelopes in the world of waves and math, also in the modular and electronics and microcontroller. Now I will move on to some example. Uh, for that purpose, I will go to Azulus. And yeah, here we are. So Azulus is a uh, very useful to just give general. Um, ideas for modular, you can replicate this using Eurorack or any other format or MaxMSP, PureData or any other thing. So the most basic use of envelopes is, envelope, sorry, is fairly simple. Uh, so first we will use um, audio outputs, that's just my loudspeakers. I will try to adjust the volume so that it's not too loud. It's stereo but we will use mono. So um, first we will uh, use a, an oscillator simple oscillator, you have the Hertz input, the amplify, uh, amplitude input, and you can pick the, uh, the waveform you want. I will take that one. So by Odulus, uh, sorry, in Odulus, there's something different from the hardware modular world, is that normally a circuit, which is an oscillator, it's just always on. There's no volume control in traditional electronic oscillator. You need an amplifier to adjust the volume of the oscillator later on. So to mimic this, I will just use uh, an expression and, whoops, oh, that's bad, sorry. And I will just edit and put a value of 1 for amplitude. So it, now it's kind of acting like an electronic modular synth in terms of, uh, it's just always on, like in the real world synth. Now it's kind of weird because there's no frequency defined. So I will just set um, a, a, like a low A, yeah, 
Oops, yeah. We don't really see it because it's fairly fast, but uh, if I go just very slow, you see it. It's just a matter of visualization in Odulus. Now you see the pattern, but I will keep it to the audio rate. That's the in Earth, so I will use an A. So now we have a classical oscillator, just like in the modular world, which is always on. Uh, so we will put that aside. And in modul Odulus, sorry, there's um, in synthesis you have the ADSR envelope generator. So the typical thing is that you have a gate, and then it triggers the shape you see here. You have the attack time decay time, sustain level, and release time. So we will try to look at what's the output. By default it's off because there's no gate. So I will use a knob or a switch. Switch? No. Ah, where is it? Don't remember. Mm. I want this little... No, sorry. Where it is again? Um, it's a toggle. Just looking for a toggle. I know you can find it somewhere. Ah. There's too many things where it can be. There's a touch clock. I would cheat. We'll go inside this and just copy. Oops. Sorry. So I just copy it. that thing, that knob. Sorry for the delay. So it's kind of a, you click and it's clicking on, whoops, no connection. Yeah, you see it's just making that thing, but you can switch it to a toggle. So now it's more like a gate, like a keyboard, um, a, pi a piano keyboard or something like that. So if I put that into my envelope generator, now it's turned on and you see attack, decay, sustain until I release that and you have this thing. So be careful, the, here you have curves, but in, in, in fact it's a linear envelope, but it does not mean, you know, it's not really important. So the first typical use of the envelope is really this idea of um, just shaping the, the signal, because if I make this thing, now it's full on. Maybe it's a little bit loud, I'll just lower it. So it's just full on. So I want to apply this envelope to that signal. So to do so, it's the most straightforward thing to do is just a multiplication because this is a number with instantaneous value and this is also a number with instantaneous value. We just plug it like this. And now it's on, sorry, turn it off. Yeah, just forget about that. So if I press this on, I've got the rise time, now it's um, sustain and release. I should leave the metering of the. We can see the level, but also the waveform of the envelope. That's just my envelope. See, rise, decay, and so on. So this is the most kind of direct use of envelopes. Of course, if you want snappy things, you just make something like that, and then you have a more like percussive sound and the gate time no longer matter because there's no sustain. So that's fairly basic use for envelopes. Uh, typical other use including shaping the timbre in time as function of time. So to do so we will just have a filter. So we have module filters. I will use a uh, which one? Bandpass up to you, bandpass filter. So this is the fre center frequency and this is the, the width of your filter. So I would just filter the signal. And now the thing is change, except that you have a different timbre because of the filter. But you can use another envelope. So I would just copy paste this envelope connected to the same gate signal, but I will use a different shape for the envelope. Is something with more harmonics. So I want to something very different and I can copy this so we can see the second envelope. Yeah, so 
just to summarize, this is the gain control envelope and this will be the filter control envelope, but it's not yet connected. I can automate the earth or the, the width of the, of the filter. Um, I wanted to automate the earth, but you see, now it's just making it off. So we'll see what happened. But you see the filter is, there's no sustain, so it's rapidly going cut off. So I don't hear the sustain of the gate. So I will induce some sustain and try it again. So now you have two different envelopes to kind of shape your node. One for the amplitude and one for the filter. And this is the most straightforward use of envelope, but it's a little bit basic or maybe not note base. So in the next tutorial, not sorry, the next tutorial, but in the next part, we will explore more complex um, situation like um, for here, for instance. We have been uh, doing this thing and the, uh, sorry, the envelope to control the amplitude and the envelope to control the filter. Now we will move to a more complex example like the automation madness. So we'll see you in a few minutes. Yes, so let's go for the amplitude madness. So uh, in few words, the idea would be to use like four envelopes and try to automate the actual parameter, like the attack, the case sustain, um, and release time of the envelope. And we will see how this can just you know transform envelopes for your enter life. So I will start with, um, we will create our working canvas first because this is example this example is a little bit longer uh, I plan to use several oscillators super basic just sign tones sign tones and up that's it but uh, we need a mixer and I will use the 8x2 mixer uh, because I want to play also with the panning just for the fun of it so this is a kind of a preset we have 8 input with level pan control stereo output you know just lower down the volume so this is the kind of first like the output of our patch then we will use again oscillators uh, just sign oscillators and uh, yeah that's roughly it we will just plug it straight to the mixer but I want to use four of them just because four is interesting and not that big in terms of if you want to do it using a Euro rack modular it's kind of for a seeder is not that expensive anyway so we just have four x four oscillators this is kind of our sound source nothing very much complicated in here and now I will turn to envelope so this way we will work on envelope uh, and now we will automate these parameter using external value. So uh, I will use a clock just to make it automatic. A BPM clock or maybe just the Earth clock. Okay, so I've got a clock that triggers my envelope. Uh, yeah, we'll see if it works fine. Yeah, see now it's very fast triggering. And the width is not that long, so we'll just shape it out. Yeah. Oh, now it's maybe too fast again. Just to see. But, oh, sorry. The width is. Uh, yeah. So you see, one shot. Another one. It's a little bit fast. Maybe faster like that. Yeah. And decay time longer. Sorry. Just adjusting until I see. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I see a repeating pattern for my envelope. Uh, now there's some issue which is different in Ozilus in comparison with the analog modular world. Let's say I just play with the sustain. You see it does not reflect like in real time. It's like when the, the gate, the other, sorry, the envelope receives the gate it seems that the parameter are fixed. You see they don't vary within the, oh yeah they can vary. You see I've made a curve. Okay so except for the sustain it doesn't vary Oh uh, yeah, great attack varying. Uh, we'll try to release just fast movement. Yeah, we see some curve. That's great. Good news. So yeah, I will use that clock. Very simple. Uh, maybe slower again, just to visualize. 
it's too slow, sorry. And I will use another one, but uh, I don't want to have the same rate. So I just copy the envelope. And let me take a break. Come back in two seconds. Okay, I'm back. So we have two envelopes, different shape a little bit, but they receive the same gate. And this range is from 0 to 1. I can show you here if we use a Oops, sorry. I will use value metering value. So this is between zero and one, and the hertz. I want to use this to control the hertz, and that one to control the amplitude of the first um, oscillator. But uh, zero one for hertz, it's not good. So we will use a math um, expression, and we will just multiply it by. Um, it's kind of uh, envelope multiplied by this. So. This should be transformed in something more useful for a frequency. You see now it, whoops, now it, mm, it ranged from zero to 110 hertz, and then it goes down. So I can plug this into the hertz thing here, but we don't hear anything because the amplitude is zero. So I just plug that. So now, yes, we have some sound. I would just add some metering uh, metering uh, uh, yeah just a matter so I can see what's happening mm hmm the sustain of the amplitude is a little bit low so we'll lower it and make that happen so you see you have a shape maybe some distortion that. Okay, so we have two envelopes for the amplitude, one for the frequency. Uh, now, if I want to create more variation, um, I could make some tricks. First, I don't want them to be triggered at the same time. So, as for the clock tutorial, I go to it's uh, Math Logic Shift Register, which is a clock divider. So, I just plug in my clock. And now you see I have, whoops, here it's the same as the clock and this time is the clock divided by 2. So I can use that for that one and maybe divide by 4 for that one. So the rate, they appear not at the same time. So you have more uh, variation, but of course now I'm just controlling the amplitude. So it's a little bit kind of straightforwardly boring because it doesn't happen so much time so I can maybe switch them like this one will control the Earth's and that one the amplitude and I would just increase the rate and change the shape so now we have kind of two speed envelope to control the two parameters so it gives you a different feeling uh, the frequency is that one, yeah, so you can make it more snappy as you like. But um, now we can do just a little trick that will change everything. In Audulis, each knob is also an input, so I can take that envelope and pipe it to the DK. You see, the DK is now changing as a function of time, depending on my envelope below. So this one is kind of modulating the frequency here, but also the decay time, if you take a look. And then that one could modulate, I don't know, the attack time of that one. And then, wow, um, this one is uh, having not uh, such a clear effect, so because of the rate of the clock, but we start to see patterns appear. So maybe that one could control, I don't know, the, the decay. Now we have some effect, but not always. But if I take another clock a little bit faster, you, you maybe see some effect, you can change the sustain, and then you have more complex uh, patterns. But that's not enough to create very complex stuff. Let's try to make just one trick that will change everything. So I copy my clock and my shift register. And as for the clock, the other clock trick, I will use a, a different rate for this clock. But this time I will kind of feedback 
the clock reset. So I take that clock and I can reset it there straight, you know, using this. So this clock will be reset by the top clock. But I can also use one of any of these. So I will take the third one here as a reset for that clock. And I will take the fourth here for the reset for that clock. And let's see what's happened. I will just increase the clock rate a little bit. And wow, now we have funky patterns. Uh, I hope it's not too loud. Maybe it should be fine. So I can crank it up a little bit. And you see, we only use one as theaters. That's really fun. And you see how this is dynamic. But now I can, for instance, just add another envelope. I will just copy these two. Uh, sorry, I missed uh, something before. It start to be complex, but this one is kind of useless, useless except for resetting. But I could have been using that one for the gate here and see how it changed. Like super simple. This one, uh, the bottom one is controlling the frequency, so I will put it on the top. So it's, uh, no, I will leave it there. So this one is controlling the frequency and this one is controlling the amplitude of my first uh, theater. And you see, it's kind of look like random, but you still have a feeling of pattern. But this is because of the reset and there's no actual random. It's just a matter of drifting clocks and shaping the thing. So now we'll start to have more fun with another envelope. And now I have plenty of clock source. So I will use, uh, I don't know what, that one, which is not yet used. And I will disconnect the automation, change the parameter a little bit just for fun and use that to automate the sustain of that one and use that to automate the attack of that one and whoa look at how it changed and we still have only one theater active so I will try to use that one for the um, oh I missed the visualization for that one and we still have only one theater but now I can turn on another theater and I will use this envelope for the amplitude but now we don't hear anything because the earth is kind of off so I'll copy this multiplication for the frequency and I will use uh, that one for the frequency of the second oscillator and you see now even more complex but now this envelope doesn't change with time that's not a problem I can take that one to automate it the attack time that one for the sustain and now there's kind of feedback because this one is automating these two and these two are also automating that one uh, so yeah, you kind of start to have a very more uh, complex pattern. And if you change the clock rate, you will have just totally different, amazing pattern. And we still have only two oscillator. So I will plug in um, the other third oscillator. So, but this time I will use for the frequency, that one is used and that one was used. So I will use this one for the frequency of uh, this one and I will use uh, this one for the amp of that and you see even more complex and we can add more so I will add two more for even more radiation copy paste one time I will just uh, unplug the automation copy paste and I want them to receive different clock as trigger, so I will just plug other clocks with different rates. But um, so yeah, and maybe oh maybe that one is not is never used. So here, and again I can use that to automate the attack, decay, and that one for the sustain, that one for the attack. This one for the uh, oh, the DK here. This one for the sustain, and that one for the release. And now you see this one is fully moving every parameter, and you see the shape is kind kind of quite changing. Uh, let's see. I will just automate everything. I do some whatever connection it takes to make fully coupled system. Yeah, that one is not fully automated. So here, maybe here. Now that would be the same. This one, 
and this one is missing yeah now it's fully automated and it kind of can be stuck <laughs> that's funny because they're just kind of all off so this trick there is to reduce sometime the wave time or just maybe it's too much at least leave one sustain uh, on at some point should change the state that's funny never had this kind of behavior let me check the decay maybe also yeah, we start to have something let me see for the rate okay pattern is back wow I like these kind of patterns but so maybe everything automated is kind of dangerous but I truly like these kind of pattern and then you can have different speeds for the two clocks one is kind of slower and one is faster and you see you have very funny uh, parameter emerging and so if it's too fast it can go just half and just by changing your clock or when a clock is resync it will change just everything but we still don't use that last one um, as either so we'll just plug in in another one like for instance, these two envelopes are just used to generate complex pattern in there, but they don't control the actual oscillator. So I will use that for uh, amplitude and that one for the frequency of our last oscillator. And it's just even more complex. But now I could change things a little to have more variation. So you see now we have just four sine tones oscillator, kind of rhythmic patterns that appear depending on the ratio of the clock and you see how this is fun to look at i really like that and then you can do funky stuff like take this or maybe that one and just plug into the panning so we have pan variation for the first oscillator pan variation for the second third uh in the fourth and I also have maybe the drive, I can use that. Uh, chuk, 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 chuk. I have only four envelopes. This one is connected to one pan. This one is also controlling one pan. Oh, this one is not that much use, only for the amplitude here, so I can use it for the drive. And now you have very complex structure. I hope it's not too loud, sorry, I don't have real-time monitoring. But I truly like these kind of pattern. And again, once it's set up, you just play with the the width of the call, the pulse. The two are can be very different, and the, the speed. And you see how you have you know, tiny structures and larger structures, but they are all related. That's very really, very cool. And as soon as you change, you know, the way you trigger uh, your envelope, like you can say, trigger that one slower, slower, and maybe this one would now be used for that one and bam the pattern is different and again the clock rate is having a huge effect and the reset the gate here used for the reset and that gate for the reset here would changes everything if you want to have quite fast repeating pattern you takes a fast gate for reset and you see now you will have should have a repeatable pattern you see this one is repeated that one also that one also but that's funny, you have two envelopes and this one also is repeatable. If you want to have, and uh, on the top here also, if you want to have more variation, as I said, you should use the reset slower. So if I take a very slow reset uh, for that one and a slow also for that one, then it would take a very long time before the patterns start to repeat. And I will try to do the uh, full automation and I hope it will not start like before. Like this one is not automated. Can use that. And that one could automate it. this one. Oh, you see, start to be more like clicky, but different kind of things. That's funny. But sustain, you should at least have one or two with active sustain. So they are on. And you can go to very fast rate to have more clicky stuff. And then you can decide to use very slower clock for more complex pattern, but with that at fast pace. You see how it's fun? I can do that for hours. You see? Tiny patterns, bigger patterns. 
change the width, make it super fast what happened. It's kind of turning to a very intense modulation. But if, if it's lower, it's more like a beat variation. And you see now because the, the reset time is slower, you have more complex pattern before any uh, patterns start to repeat. It's fun, yeah. Yeah. I really like that. And as I said, as soon as you change your reset, your kind of envelope shape, it really changed everything. Uh, not sorry, the, the envelope trigger, it changed everything in your pattern. And in terms of source, I just want to remind you that we only use four oscillators, four sine tone oscillator with frequency modulation and also ampli uh, amplitude modulation. I've been using that input, but in the analog modular world, you would use a VCA. So I really like those patterns, just massive uh, modulation of envelope and you can have very, very funny uh, patterns. So in the next part, we'll use uh, end of rise and of cycle. It's a uh, more tricky, uh, but also it gives simpler results, but it's more complex, but uh, still not bass or gesture bass. So see you in a few minutes. Um, just de one detail. Maybe in the previous example, the sound was not that obviously changing. So I just remade uh, a remix of the previous patch. The only difference is that I scale. Zoom in. Okay, no one. I just scaled the frequency range to a much higher range and it's a little bit different for each um, oscillator. See that one go up to 440 hertz. So you, you have more chance of airing the result, but it's the same principle two clocks, shift register, and lots of variation of envelopes. And I just tweak a little bit for a, a pattern. And here you can see with kind of LFO part. But also clicky part, a fully on part, traditional envelope parts. Like this kind of pattern. I just make it exaggerated in terms of sound so that you can hear. Maybe it's not the best always compositionally, but say it's a good way to create some patterns and just have fun with that. And play with the rates. And you have very different shapes. If you go very fast it's can very clicky. And many different pattern, and you don't even repatch. That's the fun part. Of it. And the idea of having two clock is very important. You can have more if you want to have more uh, different results. But yeah, that's a, just another example of what I've been making in a few minutes. Increase the effect of the sound, but again, the same thing. Uh, panning and some modulation of the drive signal kind of distorted sound a little bit but very interesting pattern so we we'll see you in two minutes hello so this would be the last part of this quick uh, video which is much longer than i was expecting and we will cover this idea of creating complex gestures using a a sequence of uh, consecutive envelopes and we will use end of cycle and end of rise for that purpose. These uh, EOC and EOR typically you want them to produce gates or triggers. Once, uh, once for instance the rise time of the, the um, attack is done and for the end of cycle you want to gate or a trigger to arise when uh, the full cycle of the envelope is done and then you can use these two gates or triggers to triggers new envelopes so maybe the result will be a little bit less um, expressive than the previous case with the envelope automation but it's a fairly important thing to understand how to you know cascade make cascades of envelopes let's go ahead with Odulus and um, yeah let's see Oops, have you seen something? I don't want you to see now, just to, to keep it simple. Uh, hey, this is a auto output, and we have an oscillator here, which is preset to have an amplitude of one, and it should run at 110 hertz. So now we should hear it. Yeah, so it's very straightforward. So we will do as usual, uh, we would use in synthesis, we have the ADSR envelope, but this time I will use a simple clock to automate, make the automation of the uh, automation of the um, the gate time, so I don't have to 
constantly click. So this trigger, as usual, uh, an envelope. Let's see. So it's really similar to what we've been doing before. I want it to be a little bit slower. Maybe with some sustain. Yeah, okay, so we have the envelope. You see one cycle, rise time, decay, sustain, and release. Maybe it's a bit shorter. So <clears throat> the idea of having um, uh, end of arise first. I'd want to a uh, gate to appear when this just you know rise up to the top here. So one of the problem with Odulus is that we don't really know what are the physical quantities. Like you can turn the knob, but you don't have any indication of numbers in terms of seconds or milliseconds. But luckily enough, uh, I just made some checkup, and typically the attack is goes from going from zero millisecond to one second. And again, we were lucky, or maybe because Odorus is well designed. Uh, if you go to the delay unit, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> if we go with the delay unit, the time here is the same range than the attack time. So that means that if you just pipe in a gate here, you cut the feedback so that you don't have a delay or echo effect, just a um, some the, the gate is later and uh, appearing later. You just crank up the mix and make the time full time and put that full time and we will compare and you will see that I was correct. You have a gate on when the rise time is reached. You see? Oh, sorry, it's not well aligned. Yeah, you see? Now the duration of that gate is just as the same as the duration of that gate. So sometimes we just want a trigger to just launch something else. So we would use something for that, which is called um, gate smear. It's um, in the math logic. Gate smear. Very, very useful, tiny block that we will use today a lot. So if you do that, you see you can tweak the duration of your trigger. And now that's great. We have an end of rise or nearly an end of rise. So you see, click when it reached the top. The problem now is that this time and this time, they should be the same to be, you know, to, to provide the expected result that we're looking for. So one trick is simply to create um, a knob. By default, this is normalized from zero to one and just plug it to the attack time, but make a copy for the time here. And so that's great because now they are linked. So one second, yeah, you see alignment. If we could make it shorter, you see we still have the, the trigger aligned with the end of rise time. That's great. So now we have uh, something that can trigger another sequence, and you can really make something interesting with that. To make it clear, we will rename that for uh, attack time, or just attack time like that. So if you turn it to zero, you see, of course, it just the end of um, rise click as soon as the note is starting. So done for that. Next, we were looking for um, something called end of cycle. And this one is a little bit more challenging. So first, we will make something very basic. I think it's in logic. Uh, Math logic greater or equal to will take just greater. So a greater than g will give you a gate. So we want to compare the actual envelope with a tiny number. So I use the expression, mathematic expression, and just type in let's say 0 0.001. So let's try that. Now we will just move that. So we should now have a gate that goes high when the envelope is on. Nothing very special, but it is the case. I will align them so we can compare. Now you see the trick here is just to make a measure of difference. You want to detect the, not the rising edge, but the 
falling edge, that one. So the trick is again to do some a little bit of mathematics. So we go ahead and we will use um, a very simple thing. We will use, it's in synthesis, no, DSP. Oh yeah, we got it. Unit delay. Oops, sorry. The unit delay is just delaying one signal by one sample. So we can use this to make an instant, instantaneous difference between the current and the past uh, sample. So this is the past sample and this is the current. So now we just have to do the difference. So we use a math node and we call it uh, current minus past. Let's see. So the current is this value and the past one is just taken from the past um, so, uh, sample, like very, very short uh, time difference. And let's take a look at what's the result of that thing. So just as a reminder, this is my end globe, this is my end of uh, rise, sorry, and this is just where we are working on, and let's try that. Great, you see now we have a very short trigger, but going up when the envelope start and going down when the envelope is finished. So we just want to keep that thing. So the trick here is to make it very simple. We can just modify that and use parentheses and then use conditional statements. Sorry, I have to switch my keyboard. Uh, lower, oops, lower than zero should give one. Yeah, let's try that. Yeah, we have a click, but only when the full cycle of the envelope is done. So this is our end of cycle, but it's a very short trigger. So again, we copy the gate smear so we can make a longer gate time. Yeah, we got it. And again, we can do the same thing for the attack time. Whoops, don't look at that. We copy the attack time and we would call this uh, gate, uh, we'll just smear, and we will connect the two knobs together so that we have a single control for both gate smear. And then using that knob, you adjust the length of the um, gate or trigger that sends a message of the rising cycle is done or the, the, the full envelope is done. So this is the end of and let me make it more obvious. We have the envelope. We have this, which is the end of rise, and this is the end of the envelope. And again, I can just make it shorter to a very short click, make it a little bit faster, and raise the, the lower the attack time. Now it's too um, too quick. And yeah, let's try shorter attack time. Now you see we have, it's still working. We have a click once the rise is done and we have a click when once the release is complete. That's great, it worked. So now you can turn this into a full block. So I will just delete everything and just encapsulate everything in that object. So I created this before, but it's the same thing as what we have, but it's a simple, just look inside. We have attack, decay, sustain, control. We have the delay, the gate smear, some LED display, the computation here, and again, the gate smear uh, controlled by this knob. So we can just get rid of everything, everything but my synth oscillator and my output. Uh, we keep the clock also maybe. So just to prove you that it's true, if I just take my clock here and I have my envelope, I've got my end of rise and end of cycle. You can adjust the gate. I've got the sustain time uh, level. Sorry, you can reduce the d uh, decay. So we have our end of rise and end of cycle with uh, LED. That's great. So what we can do with that? Now, we will hear some sound. Just 
sorry for the long explanation, but it was mandatory. So what is great is that we will just first make uh, some notes using multiplication. So if I take that, I can take my envelope and multiply, and I should have my sound. I will use a view meter just to monitor what's like going on. Yeah, and we have sound. Can crank it up a little bit, <clears throat> but. We're back to the first example. The idea now is to use these end of fries and of cycle and end of cycle to trigger other envelopes to you know make multiple kind of gesture for one note. So I will copy my envelope. And of course I want maybe a different envelope. So I would just change the parameter, make a longer decay. And now I don't want this envelope to be triggered by um, the gate here, but I will use the end of rise. And let's see what's going uh, to result from that combination. Depending on the gate of the end of rise, you see it's very quick because the gate here is very short. So I can just increase the gate. That's right. And now you see I have another envelope which is following the primary envelope in time. You can increase the attack time to have more obvious effect and reduce a little bit. So you see, they're kind of delayed, but we can use this to control another parameter. Let's say I will uh, use a fi um, filter. Mm, I will take something already done. A bandpass filter. So I just take my oscillator sound. Now it's the filtered version. But now I can take this envelope and control the, I don't know, the, maybe the, the Earth is a little bit aggressive, so I will make the width control. So you see you have a filtering effect that's not aligned with the actual uh, amplitude envelope. So I'll make it clean, so I get rid of my end of cycle. This is These are two, my two envelopes. And it's really this idea of cascading envelopes to control different parameters. So the first one is just controlling amplitude, and the second one is controlling the filter. I hope it's more clear with that display. And then you can do other stuff like copy this envelope. But this time we will use end of cycle. Let's see what happened. And you see now you have another envelope following. You can make it very quick, lots of sustain, or maybe different like that. So it's an interesting sequence that you can create. So we could use that to control, let's say, the frequency here. Uh, but we will make it a little bit different. I will just drive the, the drive here. So it will induce some distortion but the problem is that uh, uh, this was a mistake because this new envelope is after that one so you know the volume is already off so you you're kind of losing your time so it, maybe it's it would be better to just take another seater I will just change its frequency like one octave above and I will also control its amplitude. Whoa. Just get rid of everything. So it's a new oscillator, but this time this third envelope will modulate the amplitude of that new note. And I will just need a mixer. Or oh, I'm lazy, I will just add them very straightforwardly. So Adding is like mixing, but you don't have parameter control. Let's see if it's, if it's too loud. Now we have, oh sorry, we don't hear anything. So now we have two notes. This is the gain control for the first note with the filter control of the first note, and then it's followed by the other one. And you can create, of course, a huge cascade of all these things. So if I take that one and I increase the gate smear 
of the end of cycle and end of rise. You can again just create a copy. This time take the end of uh, rise, but because I don't have any attack time, uh, it, it triggers at the same time. So I would just increase the attack a little bit. And let's take a look. So now we have a very complex chain of envelope, and they may even start to overlay. But now you see the idea of sequencing envelope using end of rise and end of cycle. We can control another parameter with that other envelope. And I will just uh, make something a little bit different. <clears throat> I will also add um, a mapper. So this is just a transfer function so that you can shape whoops, your envelope which is now linear and I will make it kind of, you see, round. You can adjust it as you wish. Any more like that. You see the curve? You can make it different types of curve. I will try that one. And I will just uh, include a noise sequence, uh, a noise source white noise and I will just control the volume of that white noise using that envelope using the multiplication here but I will use the one with the shape here and um, I just need to mix it with the final mix we already have here so this is a new mix watch out if it's too loud So you see now we have a sequence of four events using end of rise or end of uh, cycle. And you know the funny part is that now every envelope that I use created um, automated different parameters. But you can do fairly different thing. Um, just one example is that you can mix your envelopes. So I will just get rid of what we are hearing now and focus on another part. So I will just put this uh, away. If you take the first envelope plus the second and we add all envelopes in a similar fashion. Okay, whoops, sorry, bad connection. Let's see what is the result. It could be a much more complex envelope no, with various phase. And this is very interesting. Let's see what is the result. Okay, but now we add four envelopes, so it kind of clips. It goes above one as soon as they're overlaying overlying uh, envelopes. So the trick is maybe to do something like math expression, and we will just multiply multiply by zero twenty five. So we divide by four. Of course, whoops, I forgot to put the uh, for envelope. What's going on? Hmm, that's interesting. Let's start that um, without expression. Uh, multiplied by zero down twenty-five. Oh yeah, there is a constant because it's exponential number. So envelope. Yeah, got it. So we just divide it by four <coughs> to avoid any clipping, and you see you have a kind of very complex envelope, but the problem is that uh, we use here the end of uh, which one? End of cycle and that one. So this created very much delayed uh, version. So I will use um, end of rise here. And you see, I have a kind of mini stage envelope. We will slow the BPM to really see what's going on. And then you have one shot complex envelope with you know various interesting shape. So let's say that we want to sh give an example of how it sounds. I will just take again the white noise here, but I will multiply it. Oops, by this uh, new mixture envelope mixture, and just get rid of that so we can we can only hear the noise. 
you see this is controlling the volume of the noise but of course you can connect this combination of envelope to you know any other parameter just wanted to make a simple example so to sum up we started with an envelope we identified the end of rise and end of cycle and then we can make a kind of cascade of these envelope to have a different set of envelope and in the end we sum the, uh, all of these envelope to have a more complex multi-sequence envelope or you can use each of the these envelopes separately to control different parameter so that's it sorry maybe that last part was a little bit less exciting but it's very powerful i mean the sound result now is not very impressive but you got the idea of creating sequence of envelope using end of rise and end of cycle and as a reminder we use a delay full mix uh, without feedback to identify the end of rise delay was applied to the input gate and we use gate smear to make it of a proper duration and we use a conditional statement here to detect positive envelope value and use a delay to make a difference time difference and we just keep the positive part in that case with again gate smear so that's it i hope it was clear i'll see you maybe next week or i don't know what will be the next topic but i'm sure we'll continue on controlling or strategy of controlling or composing patterns for modular synth